Uh, to tell us a little bit more about what's happening with the yen now that we've broken that 150 level, how significant was that threshold for traders? Absolutely. It was a big one. Um, it's a new 32-year low, and the yen is still stubbornly staying there as investors continue to really bet against the Bank of Japan's dovish monetary policy. It's truly a battle of will now that we're seeing between markets and Japanese officials on just how far the yen can fall. Will the Ministry of Finance tolerate such staggering yen weakness that's hammered everything from households to stocks? Some strategists are saying, though, that there is more weakness to come. RBC Capital Markets, for example, says one 60 is not out of the question in the coming months. As for intervention, officials have said repeatedly that not, they're not keen on excessive disorderly moves in the yen. So I think if we do see violent swings, be prepared to see some jaw boning and, and even direct action in markets here. Now, Ruth, uh, bond vigilantes are simultaneously attacking the Bank of Japan's control of its yield curve policy. Who's likely to win this battle? It is such a coin toss. Markets are betting relentlessly, obviously, that the BOJ will have to give up on yield curve control at some point. The question, though, is when. Most economists expect Kuroda to stick with yield curve control all the way through to April next year when he steps down, even though the yen is falling so rapidly. But that's not stopping the likes of UBS and Schroders, for example, in short and JGBs in what's well known as the widow maker trade. Um, they're betting that the BOJ must join the tide of everyone from the Fed to the RBA in raising interest rates as inflation comes home to rest. So definitely watch this space.